Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. We look at Isaiah 58. So far we have seen that God wants our fasting to be a one that pleases him. So in the same passage, Isaiah 58, verse 5, look at verse 5 there. It says, is it a fast that I have chosen? So think about that. We can do a fast. We can do all kinds of fasts. We've just looked at the uh, list of categories. But doing the fast is one thing. And when you are fasting for an audience, and in this case, it's God, God has to select it, or in other words, choose it, or bless it, or be pleased by it. That is more important. OK? So that's why I'm saying how many days we are fasting, what we are, we cannot boast about those things at all. In fact, those are things to be very humble about because the ultimate judge of whether the fast is a good fast, effective fast or not is God. Only he knows. He knows the matters of the heart. Okay. And see this, it says, is it not the fast which I have chosen. So never forget that. God wants to choose or be pleased or, you know, see that our fast is acceptable. Acceptable is another word for that term, chosen. We must fast. It must be part of our spiritual discipline because it has a lot of benefits, but it must be an acceptable fast unto the Lord. And that is what we see in this passage. You know, God is saying many things. See, you have done this and that, and you have all these standards. Then uh, how can I be pleased you know, with the fasting that you are offering? So we will look at uh, a little bit more about the right motives or why. You know, always answering the question why is very important before we do something. Why am I doing this? It will help us you know, uh, get a grip of everything in perspective, manage our time, our resources, uh, everything well, and also make changes. OK, if I'm not able to answer that question, why, with a good answer, maybe that's not what I should do. I should be doing something else. So the why is very important. What is my motivation you know, for fasting? So you see, there are many things which are mentioned in this passage itself. Where God says, cry, uh, cry aloud, spare not. I'm looking at it from the beginning, from verse 1. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So God is giving a response to the fasting which people are offering. So verse 2, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. So it simply says that here are these, uh, you know, these uh, uh, Israelites. What they're doing is, or, you know, God's people, what they're doing is they're keeping all the rituals. Okay. And they, they are going by the book, so to speak. And they want God to respond. They want to respond and grant favor to them. So God is saying, look, these people are saying, have we not done this? Have we not done that? Uh, and, you know, they, they are asking for my response. So verse 3, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? So look at the attitude or the motivation. What is the motivation? We want to, you know, uh, sort of plea. Uh, we just need God's attention. Did you get it? So their goal is we'll do all these things more like a show and say, look, God, we did it. We did this. We did that. We did so many things. We did all the rituals. We kept all the traditions. You are the one. You're not, uh, you know, focusing on us. You're not giving us your attention. You're not giving us the answer. What is this God? So that kind of an attitude where our goal is just God's attention. Right? We have done all these things. 
yeah god i am fasting i am a good believer we you know uh, every week i fast but what is the motivation you see the people had a very irreverent kind of an approach towards god not to say that god it's my worship to you it's more like it you know i'm doing it i've done it now you better do what you need to do so to get god's attention and that's not right that's what god is pointing out and he's saying look i'm letting you know that this is not correct okay then let's move on verse 4 indeed you fast okay uh, we'll back up a little verse 3 in fact in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers so notice god is pointing out many other things he says that you know one is finding pleasure during the fast so the way we understand this is uh, you know the jews who used to fast they had this whole regimen that okay today i can't work you know you should do all the work today is my fasting day everyone will know that it's a fasting day they will dress a certain way they'll behave a certain way so they will who knows maybe take a lot of rest on the fasting day because today i'm fasting you know they behave differently so that's what god is pointing to and he's saying the focus is not me even when you're fasting the focus is not me the focus is you because you find pleasure when you fast that's what god is pointing to and today for us it may it may apply in many other ways that yes we may claim that we are fasting but maybe there are things on that you know day of fasting that we do or the way we behave where it's all about us it's no it's not really about god okay like no i have to eat only this kind of food and it's such a big uh, thing at home that oh you're fasting okay you know so others have to uh, ensure that your fast is not broken so we can do it in so many different ways but we have to bear in mind god is the audience pleasing him with an acceptable fast is more important and god is pointing to the people and he's telling look look at your attitude you want my attention that's why you're doing it and then he points to them and he says even on the day of fast you find pleasure then he says and exploit all your laborers so as i said these people uh, might have been rich and they had workers and on the day of the fast they may have done something like oh today is my fast so my share of the work i can't do i'll distribute it to all of you so if everybody was doing x now they have to do 2x so it's like exploiting the workers okay the people who serve us uh that did not please god about these people he knew their attitude and their heart and said no you are exploiting people and he called this a fast and then he goes on is pretty uh, intense okay the rebuke verse 4 indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness so it just shows um, an attitude of um, you know pride pride and uh, uh, that resulting in behaviors like you know quarrel and arguments and um, uh, you know it 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 also shows just dishonoring people okay and having a wicked heart and to strike with the fist of wickedness god says so basically it's showing how people treat their relationships we can fast but if we are not relating rightly with people you know there's strife there's debate there's fist of wickedness so many things that we are doing the way we are misbehaving with all that if you want god to accept our fast he's saying i'm sorry i'm seeing the whole picture here and it's not acceptable to me okay let's go on it says uh, uh, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high verse 5 is it a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul see afflict his soul is when one humbles themselves and uh, one puts themselves through difficulty when we don't eat food it's like that isn't it it's not easy it's never easy to fast anybody who says fasting is easy i don't know which planet they are from okay <laughs> because it's never easy it's 
like you're afflicting your soul. But you see, that's not the only thing. Where God is saying here that what were the people doing? They were afflicting their souls to get God's attention. And the people are saying, God, we have done it and you're not taking notice. Okay, so these kind of attitudes where there's there's no proper, there's no right motivation towards God in the first place. Second, there's no right motivation towards the people. Relationships are bad because when there are workers, they are being exploited even on the day of the fast. When there are people in our lives, there is strife, debate, fist of wickedness. So what God is saying is, we need to set all these areas right. My relationship towards God. Second, my relationship towards people, my relationship towards those who work with me, for me, if I treat them badly, automatically my fast is not going to be accepted to the Lord. Okay, You see, so many things are there in, in this passage. Let's go on. So verse 5, he asks, Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast? So he's talking about all the expressions of the fast where you know people used to put on sackcloth in those days you know uh, they they used to um uh, sit like show that very sad countenance even jesus talked about it he said when you fast don't do like this you know let it be between god and you and notice jesus also said when you fast not if you fast so that also shows us that Every child of God, every believer, it's important for us to have this discipline of fasting in our life, okay, in our spiritual walk with the Lord. So when you fast, you fast the right way. So right attitude towards God, right attitude towards our, you know, workers, right attitude towards the people who we relate with, uh, and pretense. We should stay away from that. This is saying pretense, show you know, trying to be noticed by others, that's not the correct way of fasting. Uh, and then it says, verse 6. Okay, this, so now God is saying, this is the way it should be. Okay, this is the way uh, it should be. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? So now God is saying, how your attitude or my attitude should be when we fast. Is it... Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Now, to lose the bonds of wickedness. So what is God saying? He's saying you need to live righteously and you need to rule righteously. Now, let's say you know we are in charge. We are the boss. We are the master. Or in those days, they had terms like master. And all. But today, we may be a team leader. Or maybe we don't have a name, but we're still leading people. How do we do it? Don't do it with wickedness. Do it right. Okay? Live righteously. Rule righteously is what God is saying. That should be the life uh, and attitude of a person. So lose the bonds of wickedness. And if we see anything wrong, you know, we deal with it to ensure that uh, righteousness is established. Then he says to undo the heavy burdens. Remember, we said these people, they were exploiting their workers, giving them extra work. But what is God saying? Actually, you should undo their heavy burdens. If you're treating the workers badly, you make sure you treat them correct. Remove the burden. Don't exploit them on the day of your fast. So it shows compassion, isn't it? If somebody who has the authority is undoing heavy burdens or you know, they are not uh, putting uh, too much of work or uh, sort of requirements on their workers, it just shows that that individual is compassionate towards the people who work for him. That's what God is saying. I'm looking for compassion. even with the people who work for you. Then, uh, to let the oppressed go free. So wherever we have the authority, 
we must you know release freedom for people you understand so oppression in our day and time it may mean many things in our own uh, setups if people are working for us uh, and you know we make it easy for them you know if they are indebted to us we let go of them we don't hold on and uh, you know make things difficult for people so if they are oppressed you let them go free uh, and that again you know has to do with compassion it has to do with justice this has to do more with justice right having a heart for justice then what else does god say he says and that you break every yoke simply it means that we are working for justice we are working for freedom uh, of people we don't bring people under bondage or slavery and today we may see many such situations around us but does it move our hearts do we maybe we are not able to go and do something about it but do we even pray about those matters do, do those matters disturb us if they don't disturb us something is wrong right so having a heart of compassion god is looking for that um demonstrating justice god is looking for that in our own personal lives and you know extending it to circumstances and situations outside our own circle then let's move on so these are the right attitudes for a chosen fast verse 7 is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out see again god is saying isn't there a contrast earlier they were exploiting people but god is saying i'm expecting kindness i'm expecting mercy so we don't have all that and we are saying god we fasted we kept it we did the tradition ritual you didn't notice god is saying i'm sorry it's not about your act of fasting it's more than that it's the motivation of the heart and so he's saying i'm expecting um, righteousness compassion justice in this case what mercy right mercy is expecting uh and uh, basically a giving heart share your bread with the hungry right you could say compassion kindness also over here As somebody who doesn't have we can give to them okay and it says you bring to your house the poor who are cast out or having a heart of compassion to an extent where those who others have given up on we are willing to you know take them bless them so kindness even to that extent you carry in your heart so when we have that attitude then our motivation is right to fast okay what are the requirements does this say um yeah and it says when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh so again when you see the naked compassion kindness justice and you don't hide yourself from your own fleshes more of duty and responsibility right so just because oh i'm fasting forget it i'm not going to do take care of my responsibilities i'm i have devoted my life to the lord you deal with your own problems no what does it say it says no there are responsibilities we have maybe our family members our parents our siblings what is my duty i have to do it god is noticing everything right so and i'm not saying uh, this is more applicable you know like our immediate family obviously there'll be so many people we can't be answerable for all but the people god has put in our lives and who we are responsible for when they are in need we need to show our love and uh, you know our um respect by doing the needful and that's also important so when we have all this in place the right motivation that is when we saw the wrong motivation getting god's attention exploiting people not having a right relationship with others you know fighting quarreling everything is going on but still we are fasting with bad attitudes god is saying i'm sorry you know and showing off that i've afflicted my soul god you not taken notice that's all wrong what is right 
righteousness, justice, compassion, mercy, right? kindness, responsibility. All this is so crucial when we fast and pray. Now, verse 13, just jump to verse 13. Okay, Then we come back to the blessings which are um, in between over here. So we continue to look at the chosen fast and the requirements that God has uh, before us. Okay. Um, yes. So it says, verse 13, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words. So basically, you know, this is not telling us that, uh, again, you know, we don't want to get into an argument about Sunday or Saturday. It's not that kind of a rigid, legalistic way of speaking. Basically, what God is saying is, see, there's a day devoted to the Lord, Sabbath, the Sabbath. But we honor God. You know, when we, when we um, believe in the Sabbath, it simply says that one is we choose to worship God. Second is God is all able. So when I am resting, I am trusting that God, today, even though I have dedicated to you, you are going to bless my life. My blessing is coming from you, not only my hard work. Of course, hard work is there. We are not saying don't work hard. Sabbath is a concept where we are saying what is due to God, you know, worship. And we all set a day of the week aside to worship the Lord, to remember the Lord, to honor the Lord, okay, uh, dedicated to the Lord. In that, our heart is seen uh, which shows complete trust. Lord, I worship you and I trust you. I know. I, though I have given you my time, you are going to bless. You will multiply. Whatever I'm working with, you will multiply it, Lord. You will cause it to prosper. So it's faith. When you um, practice the Sabbath, you honor the Sabbath. So you're taking time for worship. You're taking time uh, to honor and magnify the Lord. One more thing that is said over here is we are more mindful of what pleases God. Sometimes it says you do your own pleasure, even on the Sabbath. See, we can have our own agenda, even for godly things, for godly disciplines. But it's a heart which is truly seeking God, which says, God, what do you want? What is going to make you happy? You know, which is the song which makes you happy? Sometimes we sing songs which we like. But is that the song that is going to bless the heart of God? Now, I'm just giving a simple example. So we think like that. We think like that. Okay, God, it's about you. It's your ways. So that attitude is what is required when we want to offer God a chosen fast. Okay, so honor the Lord you uh, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. So you're seeking the pleasure of God. Verse 14. Okay, that is a blessing. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob and your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. So we have seen how we should not be, how we should be, and we can do this kind of fast for ourselves, or we can do it for others, right? Uh, or we can do it... Um, like as a community also, let's say uh, a city, we talked about it, city transformation, prayer for the city, entire groups of people can also fast. So either we can do it for ourselves or we can do it for others. And there are many examples in the Bible of uh, fasting. I'll try and share some of them with us. Okay, so we see that... Um, you know, fasting is about humbling, waiting, seeking the Lord, 
seeking God's help, his deliverance, protection, uh, or even sometimes we want to hear from God, right? We need a word. God, speak to me. Uh, tell me what should I do with my life. In that time, it's good to actually fast and seek the Lord. Uh, we could pray for mercy and say, Lord, something that's going on, we need your mercy. We petition God that God uh, let not the consequence for the wrongdoing come upon these people, but we pray that you will uh, deliver them, forgive them. Then we can uh, fast when we also commission people. So if you recall in Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, these um, elders of the church in Acts 13, they were fasting, they were ministering to the Lord. At that time, God told them, set aside for me Paul and Barnabas for the ministry for which I have called them. So even when we choose leaders, we call it commissioning. We choose them and we send them out to do the ministry work. It is a practice which we see in the uh, Bible that people fasted before they did that. So we can do things like that. Or as part of ministry, Paul, he said, uh, he uses, um, he says, many fastings. So how did Paul live? It was part of his lifestyle. He did a lot of ministry, that much we know. But in his ministry, we are sure he would have done a lot of fasting also. So when we are going to minister, it's a good thing sometimes to take time out and just fast to develop that faith, uh, to, to see a flow of the anointing and all that. So fasting actually helps. So for all these reasons, we can fast. Uh, we have seen people in scripture fast for various things. Ezra, he fasted for direction from God. Um, Ezra and the people, they fasted for repentance. Esther and her people, they fasted when they faced a challenging situation. Okay, So that's what they did and they got deliverance. Daniel fasted to seek God for the deliverance of his people but also for the fulfillment of a prophetic word. If you have a prophetic word and you know, you're saying, God, you spoke over my life. I want to see this fulfilled. We can fast and pray. That will also you know, be something. Because we see in the Bible, people did things like this. Daniel, he fasted for understanding and revelation. He couldn't understand. He saw visions. He couldn't understand anything. So he used to fast. When he would fast, the revelation will come. The understanding will come. Okay, So we can follow their footsteps. Jesus fasted before he began his public ministry. Remember, 40 days he fasted. Then he started going and ministering to the people. So even we can do that. We can fast before we go and do our ministry. Um, we can fast to commission leaders. I already said that. We can fast. Yeah, so those are all the reasons. Now, when we fast for all these reasons and in the right motives, what are the blessings that we can expect? So we are going to look at that. There are 18 statements of promise in Isaiah 58 itself when we fast the right way. Okay, so if you're looking for blessings, Fasting the right way can release at least 18 blessings on our lives. Okay, So, you know, I already told us that fasting is quite hard. It's a discipline, right? So, uh, but what makes it delightful? What makes fasting delightful? Or what makes fasting uh, a good practice? How do you convince yourself that, no, I have to fast? It's hard. It's very hard. But how do you convince yourself? Sorry? OK. If you know that it's God-ordained, then huh? Yes. OK. So if uh, we know that it's God-ordained, and if we know the outcome, then we will fast. OK? That makes sense. 
how 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 do the others do it okay there's a comment here we are in the presence of the lord okay so when you uh, know that when i'm fasting i'm in god's presence you're happy about that it's okay no problem i can bear it because i'm in god's presence how else what else gives you the motivation to fast okay so can we say your hunger or desire for more of god so that is also motivation so if i do this i'll go closer to god as god's word says draw near to me i will draw near to you okay great so i'm going to get more of god so that's nice what else is a motivation we need lot of motivation come on fasting ha huh? yeah it pleases god the chosen fast pleases god correct 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 so it's going to give us spiritual strength so that's a good reason why we would want to fast what else how do you convince yourself what are your uh, you know words in your head ha huh? praising god prioritizing god okay okay that's fine okay more sensitive i'll become more sensitive to the holy spirit okay that's true that's true yeah okay nice so yeah okay he is worth our time and our effort and all that sure um sorry for the interruption just give me a moment i think i have to plug in the laptop the battery is down so okay thank you everyone so um all these reasons we have to actually pursue the fast because though it is difficult it is worth it okay it's like think about a mountaineer who wants to climb mount everest if you ask him is it difficult obviously it's difficult we can give him a thousand reasons why you will face this you will face that you will struggle you will have pain you will you will not meet your family for so many days it's going to be cold he's like i know everything but i'm going to reach the summit if i reach the summit that's worth everything that i have done so fasting is somewhat like that for the body you know it it's almost like your flesh is crying out don't do this to me but <laughs> you're like no i have a better reason why i have to do this to you <laughs> okay and self control right self control remember paul says that crucify the flesh so you can't tame the flesh with counseling okay today you be good you know don't do this don't do flesh will not listen you want to train yourself up you got to crucify it and fasting is a wonderful way for crucifying the desires of the flesh where obviously the flesh will feel like i'm dying right but that's the point we want you to die we want and when i say flesh i don't mean the body got it so we don't want to harm the body notice this for a period of time wisely we will not uh, eat food and all but the intention is to crucify the flesh which is uh, the sinful desires of of the soul and the body okay good so we understood that though fasting is so challenging we have very good reasons there are benefits okay there's another comment which nina is sharing here she says the benefits that we are looking at 
uh, to lose chains of injustice to break break every yoke whether it is regarding the unsaved or sometimes sickness or regarding your nation this is also partnering with god to bring about his purposes very true uh, meena so in this way god is giving us an opportunity to experience blessings um fulfill his purposes co work with god fulfill his purposes right so it's when you see the value of acceptable fast it's way greater than the discomfort that we may face okay so we step in and we pursue the fast and not just that i said yes anand okay so what anand is saying is uh, when one is willfully sinning repeatedly okay so should they fast to seek forgiveness i would say ha huh? will it please god see in fact god has made it uh, like he has provided for us to receive forgiveness by confession itself okay like 1 john chapter 1 verse 7 through 9 if you just confess your sin if you're sincerely repentant you can receive forgiveness but sometimes what happens is maybe there is an addiction or where my flesh is weak i want to do the right thing but i'm not able to you got it where my will is weak in such a situation fasting is very helpful because one of the outcomes of fasting is i've been telling us self control our uh, the will of the spirit becomes stronger when we fast and we can tell the flesh no you can overcome your addictions if you fast so in that situation what you're saying is correct we can fast we can show express our repentance but at the same time receive the strength to overcome that habit or you know whatever it is that we're going to yeah sure so all these good things about um, fasting and the fasting we are talking about is spiritual fasting okay and i also mentioned to us if you see in the world now today there are so many researches about only fasting not spiritual fasting like you know you call it dieting or starving or whatever but there are many benefits in general when people fast so no wonder god knows that right he knows it he knows how he built our body so he knows that this is something you all can do okay it's not going to uh, really uh, destroy or affect you in a negative way if you calculate and do it in a wise manner so there are many benefits natural benefits as well as spiritual benefits so what are the blessings as per isaiah 58 we will look at them so we saw from verse 8 to verse 14 at least 18 blessings have been recorded for us so we will look at each one says in verse 8 your light shall break forth like the morning okay light break forth like the morning so we can look at it uh, in in a way that in our life if we are experiencing darkness and you know this is symbolism light and darkness light is god's work god's deliverance god's power right his his intervention in our lives we can experience god's intervention in our lives when we fast and it says light will break forth like the morning bright like after the darkness comes the light so the darkness in our lives will be dispelled this is a mighty blessing that we think wow you know uh god will intervene in my life situation when i fast so we can uh, actually take this hold on to this whenever we fast we can say lord you said in your word light will break forth 
so i am cleaning it light will be put in my darkness and you know you, you fast on the basis of that um then you know we can look at um, yeah we could also say look at this as darkness will flee when you put the light what happens let's imagine it's dark now and we put the light what will happen will the light ask for permission excuse me can i come darkness can you please go no right it's pitch dark you just put the light on the light it's it's like unapologetic i have come so you have to go so immediately darkness is gone it has to retreat same way in our lives maybe there are things which are of uh, you know like demonic strongholds affliction so many things that the enemy is doing we can compare that to darkness what happens when we fast god's light will shine only thing the darkness has to do is run away so we can expect it when i fast lord thank you the light will shine thank you that the darkness will flee so it gives us so much of confidence to actually fast with um faith you know light represents many other things light represents um understanding illumination revelation clarity that also we can expect lord light will bring forth means i'll have better understanding you know about the godly things in my life so uh, that is a blessing god has given verse 8 itself it says your healing shall spring forth speedily so when we are looking for healing from god it can be physical healing it can be emotional healing it comes quickly i'm not saying it god said it. so we can say lord i'm fasting and i believe that healing is going to come quickly you said in your word that you would bless with quickness you know of healing when we fast so uh you know we can pray that so uh wounds shall speedily be healed over uh, and the scar of thy wounds shall be speedily removed according to you know adam clark's commentary on the bible uh, let's also look at verse 8 saying your righteousness shall go before you your righteousness shall go before you so uh, this means that you know righteousness when we walk in righteousness what will it do it will make a way for us you remember joseph joseph in egypt he could have done whatever he liked but he was a righteous man he did the right thing when nobody was looking what happened to him he was exalted okay so that's what this means your righteousness will make a way for you if you're living rightly sooner or later you will see blessings in your life okay so that will happen you can confidently walk in righteousness and righteousness is also you know a protection for us in um, uh, the armor ephesians 6 no ephesians 6 the armor we we talk about that right spiritual armor it says breastplate of righteousness <laughs> breastplate of righteousness it covers the chest when we have a breastplate and if the enemy shoots an arrow what will happen will it will it pierce me will it pierce my heart no because i have a breastplate so in other words when we do the right thing or righteousness walking rightly before god protects us you don't have to be afraid if you're doing the right thing why should you be afraid breastplate of righteousness got it so god is saying your righteousness will make a way for you righteousness will protect you and i will make sure these things happen to you so that is another blessing we saw um we may go slightly over time is that okay maybe 5 minutes 6 minutes but i'll try to finish yeah uh okay so next thing is verse 9 then you shall call and the lord will answer you shall cry and he will say here i am so god is saying do you want an answer do you want a quick answer fast because i will respond to you answers to prayer come when we fast okay so see so many promises are there so when we fast no 
we should think of all these promises it will help us uh, fast better verse 10 then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday this is very similar to what we already said right light and darkness so our light shall shine another way in which you can look at light is that we will also be a witness a representative of god you can look at it that way as well now verse living what a beautiful promise it says the lord will guide you continually wow so when we present a chosen path to god god is saying at all times i will be guiding you okay that's the best counsel that we can get from god and god tells us in our life where should i go what ministry should i do you know uh, where should i invest uh, what decisions should i make god will guide he will tell us how you do this do this so our life will be guided by god when we fast then uh, verse 11 it also says and satisfy your soul in drought so you know the emptiness of life sometimes the empty places uh, or in life that we experience difficult times situations where we may feel like something is missing i need more god i need more from you god is saying if you fast you satisfy your soul in drought you feel i'm so dry you will experience god satisfaction okay uh, so what a promise it's like you're in a desert but god still provides like the israelites manna was there water was there whatever they needed in the wilderness god will provide if we fast verse 11 and strengthen your bones strengthen your bones you know bones are like the structure that hold us so you can say that like the understanding is wholeness healing from within and quite literally it will also strengthen our bones so when we fast we can reap the benefits verse 11 you shall be like a watered garden so a dry a garden which has not received water what happens yeah it it looks so dry once i've been to Uh, on a mission trip we had been to a particular place it was so hot and uh, we had to pass through the fields and you know how it it says in the bible the fields are white it was like that so you know just white uh, dry um, i don't even know what to call it hay like thing and so hot it's all dried up but god is saying if we fast you will be like the well watered garden how does a well wa- watered garden look prosperous so we will be thriving prosperous satisfied okay so these are all the blessings that we can see we see that there is a promise of restoration and god is saying those from among you shall build the old waste places in verse 12 So what is God saying? He's saying, "You who fast, I will give you the grace to rebuild, restore, rebuild what? Maybe rebuild communities, rebuild lives of people. So maybe we are doing, you know, some ministry. We want to see people being built up. When we fast, what happens? God gives us that grace, restore uh, their lives, broken lives, restore marriages, you know, um, uh, restore people, help." restore their finances families businesses whatever is lying in ruin you no know, like god who is our restorer we can also see restoration verse 12 also says you shall raise up the foundations of many generations see when a foundation is strong and uh, the building can last for many many years it's somewhat like that so whatever we do god is going to give it lasting strength when we do something like for example i'm just giving an example okay i'm not exactly relating it to that but abraham you think about abraham's faith even today we talk about it wow how strengthening similarly you could think 
whatever i do in my life it's is going to be a blessing in the kingdom god will make sure that it will be a blessing for generations to come if we fast so so many great promises we have from the lord we will uh, restore we will raise strong foundations verse 12 also says repairer of the breach meaning if there is a breakdown between communities between family relationships whatever it is i'll give the grace for those things to be restored so we can fast uh, verse 12 says restorer of streets to dwell in again very similarly similar to what we are saying restoring communities okay giving them strong foundations then uh, verse 14 you shall delight yourself in the lord okay so basically god is saying when we fast he'll also give us a capacity to enjoy god now sometimes it feels like a task are i have to do this no god is saying i'll make you delight means you will desire you will love it to actually follow me uh, and that can happen if we fast so he will give us the grace to desire him uh, verse 14 also says i will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth simply it means honor do you want honor are you looking for honor victory in your life if you fast god is saying i'll put honor on your life you will be honored then verse 14 also says feed you with the heritage of jacob your father so that simply means all the promises that have been given to uh, jacob in the in the bible or the chil- children of god you can take it that way god will give it to us we will enjoy the heritage of the blessings that have been given to his people so over here just 18 are listed but from other passages we understand things like our faith is strengthened so much when we fast okay so i'm just going to wrap up now thank you for your time just give me a little bit more time since you don't have the next class um i want to encourage us to take time in fasting so maybe some of us are here saying i never fast i don't know how to fast you can start small maybe you can start with skipping a meal one meal and then you come back in the evening you come back home if you're working read the bible pray right maybe maintain a journal in which you write down your prayer request what god spoke to you so that way you start the habit of fasting so you can go from one meal a day to maybe two meals a day and at, uh, you can even set aside a day where you do three meals a day then another thing that helps is i'm sharing from my own life this is how i learned to practice uh, if you are not very strong at this you can do it with somebody else who fasts so uh, i had you know some sisters they used to say okay come we'll fast so they'll also fast i'll also fast and at the end of the day we'll meet read the bible pray worship and close off so we used to do it that way so then you know i slowly started getting some strength in fasting and then slowly i learned that in certain certain um, uh, places and ministries they set aside a day or two days for fasting like if you read about the methodist movement john wesley and his team he used to insist that people fasted two days wednesday and uh, friday from morning to one part of the day that was mandatory for them so you know when i heard of things like that i recognized that it's possible to do it every week more regular otherwise what happens sometimes we just say ah whenever there's an issue i'll fast and there's a problem i'll fast but what is helpful is since we're also talking about discipline and walking in all these blessings every week you, know, you can set aside one day and you decide if you want to skip one meal or two meals is up to you and different seasons of your life it might look different maybe in some season uh, you know you might skip two meals but some season you might only be skipping one meal that's okay okay so don't be too hard and fast the main thing is to maintain the regularity in addition to that uh, like when i get some holidays and all when i don't have to do work travel 
can take two days fasting, three days fasting, because you're at home. You can manage your time and uh, energy. So things like that. And it's been such a blessing, I would say, in my own personal life to actually fast. And then you can do special times, 40 days, um, 7 days, 14 days, 21 days. It's up to you. right? But it's a great blessing to fast. God has given that to us. So it's a good thing to develop it slowly. Okay. So if you have any questions, we can just answer them and uh, we will close off the session. Anything practical? Sure. So if you have uh, later also, uh, you can ask me. I'll be around and uh, online students can post it on the stream page. So that's a little bit about fasting. And the last chapter in our notes, uh, which we have not touched, is uh, chapter 22. Basically, it has this incident where uh, you, know, you had people saying, or on a mountain, uh, ex uh, Exodus 17 verses 9 uh, and through 11. You know, when there was a war going on, there were uh, people on the mountain who were praying. You remember, I think Moses, right? He lifted up his hands and then he couldn't keep it up. So there were these two men who were holding his hands. So whenever he his hands were raised, they were winning the war. Whenever his hands came down, they were losing the war. So it's simply a picture for us to recognize that the real action is in prayer. Okay. Yes, hard work and good strategy and um, implementation, all those things work in the natural, but they have to be accompanied by prayer. So when prayer goes up and when prayer is strong, many mighty things will take place and we should never forget that. Okay. Uh, so uh, it puts it beautifully. Prayer is where the action is. Prayer is where the action is. We've learned so much about prayer. Uh, we can release our authority. We can fulfill God's purposes. But the main thing now is put it into practice. We put it into practice. I know one brother, he works uh, with us now. He's part of our outreach team. Uh, but every time I talk to him, he says, sister, he studied in our Bible college many years ago. Now he's a pastor. So he says, Whatever I learned those days, whatever notes Pastor Ashish gave, all this pastor's notes, by the way. So I'm just you know sharing it with us. Till today, I have it, sister. I've marked in the notes. Um, sometimes I preach from it. Many times I revisit the notes. I never lost even one paper. I didn't lose it. It's with me. I still refer it. I refresh my understanding. And it is helping me. As a pastor, I am able to maintain a strong foundation in God's word. So point I'm making is what we have learned today will never become old. Never think, ah, I finished prayer and intercession. Yeah, yeah, I finished it. No, 2022. I finished it in APC Bible College, Bangalore. Yeah, we understand it. But you see this knowledge, you should never say, ha, ho gaya. Don't ever say that. Because now the most important thing we have to apply it, use it, right? Uh, so pray and ask God, Lord, thank you for what we have learned, but help us to use it, isn't it? That's when it makes sense, whatever we've learned. So let's just close off uh, this session and the course with a word of prayer. I'll just pray for all of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we are so grateful that um, we could spend time in your word. Father, we thank you for, uh, uh, Lord, uh, your word, which is living and active and powerful, Lord, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, thank you that it is shaping our inner man, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for giving us this privilege of prayer. Lord, we, we thank you that you've given us, oh God, the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit who aids us in prayer. So Lord, I pray 
that as your people as your children lord you will take us on this journey where where lord we will experience so much in prayer oh god and not just experience but lord release your power and your glory father god through our praying lord release your authority through our praying father god and lord we thank you in advance lord we thank you in advance for going before us we thank you in advance lord for strengthening us continually father god in this area of prayer and lord we pray that uh, many mighty things lord will be accomplished in each of us personally as uh, as a body and father god for the glory of of your name in your kingdom in this nation lord and the nations of the world we thank you once again father god we surrender everything uh, and lord we thank you so much lord for helping us uh, go through this entire course in jesus name we pray amen amen so um yeah thank you everybody uh, you shall receive your marks both online and uh, um, ca on campus students tomorrow your first graded assignment for the online students e learn uh, it's already posted the uh, assignment questions but uh, google classroom it will be different so i'll be posting it you can access it tomorrow and please complete your assignments in time and uh, for you i think they'll give the timetable when your exam will be okay so the portions is remaining remaining chapters i'm not including the first set which we did yes of course yeah okay all right so let's close up thank you oh my pleasure thank you everyone god bless okay thank you my pleasure okay there's a question here i'll answer this adjustment at times during fasting i find my flesh reacting more rather than on usual days of prayer i get angry quickly so i have not fasted for quite some time now today i learned very clearly about the right attitude for fasting and why i do it matters to god rather than the length of duration of the fast i thank god for bringing me to this clarity of thought and mind about fasting and prayer so sure, uh, jashin thank you for sharing that uh, but one more thing i want to tell you is see uh, sometimes you no know, like getting angry and all it's very natural because uh, the body when you've not see of the body so we that's why i've been saying wise wise so maybe on the days when we fast we can pick the days when we ha don't have too much interaction with people uh, or the days when we don't have too much workload these are all practical things so that way what happens uh though you are fasting you are not you know putting undue uh, pressure on your body okay and your natural self so uh, yeah it happens to all of us when we fast we get a little irritable uh, but yeah we learn how to manage it as we practice fasting in our daily lives okay so thank you jashin thank you so much and thank you everyone i really appreciate each of you especially from home uh, connecting like this um you know may the lord reward you for uh, making this effort and i hope uh, you've been blessed by these classes uh, and enriched for god's glory thank you once again god bless you abundantly bye bye for now